Hey, good afternoon everyone up here at Rubber City Harley Davidson. I'm here to pick up a few things for the bike. Uh, I put the new seat on the bike here yesterday and really really like it. So we'll review how I put it on, what I think after the first 150 miles here, and how easy it was to install. We'll go over some other things. So I hope you're all having a great day. Enjoy the introduction and I'll talk to you in a little bit. Heading back down here, the little nice little roads back here behind the Harley Davidson dealer. They're rough, but before we get going too far, I want to welcome my first subscriber, Mudcat. Um, it's an honor to have somebody that you know, to click and follow and think that the videos are interesting. I really appreciate it. You know, I started doing this channel here just to, uh, as a way to send videos back and forth to my brother and my mom and everybody back home. You know, I live about a thousand miles away from home. And just wanted them to be able to see what I was out doing and some of the different sites. So, you know, I'm glad you're along and get to see some of the sites. And I appreciate the kind words there, sir. So, as you saw in the introduction there, I was up at the Harley Davidson dealer. And I uh, picked up some, some of the docking hardware covers and everything there. So I don't have the chrome ends and everything like that exposed in the back of the bike. You know, after taking off my... Uh, Harley Davidson hammock seat there and uh, I wanted to cover that up just so that it looked better and I went up there and got that and uh, visited with the people uh, quite a few new models of bikes there they've been selling a lot of bikes and, uh, so that's good to see I know it's supposed to be beautiful weather this week and uh, you know, that usually means sales pick up and go really well for them but it's been uh, very very good sales up there for them so now uh, the first thing I'll talk about here is the seat, the new seat I got on here. Uh, it's a seat that's from Whiplash Speedco, and uh, it's a veteran-owned company. And they call it Whiplash because they say that you'll get whiplash from when you walk away from the bike, turn around to look at it. And I can see that being true because it is one fancy, fancy-looking seat. Um, as far as putting it on, yeah, it took about. 10 15 minutes for me to swap out my hammock seat uh, I'll show you some pictures and different things here it was really straightforward I just you know took off my quick docking you know I had a, a rack in the back and I had a sissy bar those come off they take about 30 seconds to take off and uh, one screw off comes the seat and uh, the leather strap that's two screws there and uh, the only really thing I had to work on was you know, I had a cable on there for my backrest. And I had to just push forward on it, pop the uh, end of the cable forward, and pull it back through, and everything come off. I put the seat on there, took the seat off, and uh, put the new bracket on there, which uh, took, you know, three minutes. And then all I had to do is set the seat on there and tighten the bolt down. Uh, the fit was perfect. It lined right up. Took no time to put on there. Like I said, it, if it took me 15 minutes total to do all that, uh, that I would be surprised. So, yeah. I took it out for a ride last night. And I uh, just to see how it felt. And the first thing I can tell is that uh, I sit about an inch lower than what I used to. And I sit about an inch back further than what I did on the, the hammock seat and that makes a huge difference you know as far as like I feel like I don't know how to explain it other than to say that I feel like I'm sitting in the bike now or the hammock seat you know it was literally like you were sitting in a hammock and the bike moved around you and you were floating around up there it uh, takes some time to get used to for sure when I first started riding that but as far as position and handling you know how it affects maneuvering the bike this is definitely an upgrade from what I had on the hammock seat. Uh, this this Whiplash Speedco seat is very firm. 
Uh, it feels hard. But man, I've been riding it now. You know, I got 150 miles on it. And it doesn't affect my butt at all. You know, it actually, it's very, very comfortable, very nice. And I'll shut her off here for a little bit while we're waiting. No sense idling forever here. But uh, very comfortable. Very comfortable to ride. And, uh, you know, as far as like the padding and everything there, smooth, feels nice. You know, you get good grip, you know, from the double diamond stitching there. Yeah, it's been really good. In regards to fit and feel of the seat, uh, the seat has a very nice lip in the back of it. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm going to slide off or anything such as that. You know, if you accelerate a little bit, uh, you feel like you're well seated. You know, uh, the, the backrest that I had on my hammock seat, I will tell you that was nice. You know, for some of the longer rides that I'd go on. You know, this is a 2019 and I already have almost 25,000 miles on it. And I've put all those miles on it myself. So, you know, I bought this bike to ride it. And uh, I can really tell the difference. You know, as far as like comfort, like would I be able to ride this bike for six, seven hours on a day? You know, no problem. And from what I can tell so far on the seat, the answer is yes. You know, maybe with the backrest a little bit different, but just in the three hours or so I've ridden it, it has really been nice to ride. So we'll see. Uh, the company was great to work with at Whiplash Speed Co. Great people to work with. Um, you know, they. When I ordered the seat, they told me, you know, this is going to ship in about three weeks. And it was three weeks to the day when I went there. And, you know, it was almost four weeks total before it was at my doorstep. But, you know, like I said, they're a small company. Seems like from what I've read about them. And, uh, you know, they're doing the best they can. They are a veteran company. If people who know me, they know I like to support veterans. And, uh, yeah, I give them two thumbs up for that. Uh, here we come up to that roundabout that we've been through a few times before. This one that has like seven different roads coming into it. Always interesting to see what goes on through here. A lot of people out. Here we go. Let everybody know we're staying left. And there we go. Like I said, that's always a interesting little roundabout there, but it is what it is. So anyway, what do I notice the biggest differences between this seat and the hammock seat? Really, it has more to do with the way it handles down the road. Like uh, this seat right here being more anchored, it just seems like controlling the bike and, uh, it is so much more. The bike is so much more responsive. When before, I said the hammock seat, you're actually sitting on a hammock. That's why it's called a hammock. So the bike is actually moving around underneath you. And uh, when you first sit on one, it feels weird. And uh, it takes a little while to get used to. But as far as handling the bike, that's probably the thing I noticed. It's the, the biggest difference. And uh, it's been really good. As I said, I am sitting a little bit further back. And uh, like when I put my feet in the pegs here, you know, I, I can tell that I'm a little bit further back because my legs are just a little bit more straightened out. And it feels very comfortable. You know, my arm position, again, is just about an inch, maybe two inches below, direct below my shoulder height. But everything's right straight in line. You know, my mirrors, you can see they're perfect, unobstructed view back behind me. And uh, it's a really good setup. So, seating wise, posture wise, comfort wise, uh, everything, I give it two thumbs up. So, to uh, Mudcat, my first subscriber, again, sir, thank you very much. Uh, it, it does seem kind of funny to have somebody, you know, besides my family, who's interested in something that I'm doing. Uh, thank you very much but uh, in your comments there you spoke about the saddle sore 1000 and how you're gonna go out and do one of those and you know we could share some information back and forth and uh, the first thing I'll tell you is definitely go ahead and do it you know it's uh, 
it may seem intimidating or anything like that but you know I mean I put on a few miles you know I mean it's not uncommon for me to put on five six hundred miles on a weekend I do ride a lot but I didn't find it to be you know that much more than what I normally do and uh, what I mean by that is uh, you know how it is when you start riding and stuff after about 250 300 miles you know you start fidgeting around a little bit in the seat and then you get comfortable but really for me mile 400 all the way to mile 900 I didn't notice any uncomfort or anything like that it's just a, you hit a groove and everything just seemed to flow together so fatigue wise and everything such as that you know I mean obviously you want to rest up well the night before um, you know I carry a thermos with uh, ice water in it and uh, I have some tea in there I just like having some you know tea some black tea in there for flavor and uh, at each one of the stops or whenever I felt thirsty I would just stop and have water uh, I didn't stop and have a lot to eat uh, I would just have a protein bar or something like that at the at the gas stations but that's just me uh, I don't really like to have a big meal especially when I did it it was 94 degrees that day you know so as far as that goes you know if you want to eat stop and eat you have plenty of time you know even if you only average 50 miles an hour it's only going to take you 20 hours and uh, for me it took me like 19 and a half hours to do my ride and the main reason it took 19 hours 19 and a half hours was because I got caught in a traffic jam out there in Saginaw and Flint and uh, that added about two hours to to the ride so yeah it wasn't that bad there's no no sense in hurrying through it the next point of advice I would have is it had to do with you know keeping track of all the fuel receipts and all the photographs there uh, the photographs you know that's obviously on your phone or however you're gonna take the pictures there but the receipts and uh, what I found what I wish I had to do and if I do another one what I will do differently is to have a little clipboard or something to put the receipt in to hold it and probably the most difficulty I had was the receipt when it came out there was all curly and when you're trying to hold that next to your odometer in one hand and taking a picture with the camera on the other one and so you don't get a shadow so that you can actually see what the odometer says it's difficult where if you just had a you know a nice little clipboard put it on there hold it there done deal uh, that's how I would definitely do it on the next time and that way also your receipts you have a place to hold them and save them you know you're not just stuffing them inside a plastic bag and uh, hoping that you don't lose one or you're hoping that you remember to close the plastic bag and they don't get wet or whatever but uh, yeah a little clipboard um, I found that the major gas stations you know like a major shell or BP or what, whatever one you're gonna go to but if it's a main one their printouts were very clear their timestamp was very accurate and uh, they had all the information on there that the uh, Iron Butt Association is looking for. Uh, I did have one issue with the with the one little gas station I went to there, that Meyer station, and uh, it had the wrong time on it on the on the fuel receipt. Now I had the timestamp from my camera, and I also had the video and everything like that following through where I gave the time, so I knew what time I did it. And uh, if you do read an Iron Butt too, they do talk about how. You know even if you get a time they understand that the times are off and everything like that and uh, but you know just document it and do whatever there so I did that but uh, like I said you know I did not have any issues whatsoever at the Shell gas stations or the BP gas stations the the larger ones I went to everything was accurate to a T uh, I did use a witness at the at the beginning and at the end they say that you do not have to do that if you're using the photograph method but I did anyway, and I also video recorded it as you saw more things there. Yeah, so one of the other things about the saddle sore for me was being prepared for all the different weather. Now, you know, I have a bagger here and I'm um, on my road king and you know I carry my rain suit with me and everything like that and I had an extra longer shirt there and when I started off that morning you know it was about 70 degrees 
and I uh, got just a little bit of rain uh, when I left Grand Rapids and it sprinkled and rain not heavy not bad but just enough to be a little bit you know to cool you off and to get all over your visor and by the time I was riding midway through the day there you know it was 94 95 degrees when I was coming through through the Michigan that was all good but by the time the Sun started going down uh, when I got back into Ohio and I really started getting cold and I had the same amount of clothes on uh, I don't know if it was you know just because you get that hot and everything like that but I started to get pretty cold so I wish that I would have had you know a long sleeve shirt or just one more little thing that I could have stopped and put on when I was in that gas station in Ohio that would be another thing that I would definitely recommend choosing the route uh, from what I see and what I read on there you know some people do the box method where they start and then they go to a point go to a point go to a point and then return back uh, that takes a lot more documentation and different witnesses different things there from what I read and uh, I just thought it would be you know for me I traveled from basically my brother's house to my house and uh, it seemed a lot easier if you were just going directly in a line from spot to spot and uh, I see a lot of people do it the other way too and, uh, but for me it was pretty easy then just to type in you know it's right on Google Google Maps right there 1038 miles boom boom there you have it and uh, straight forward so that's the route I went uh, one of the other things I would say is a good idea for the saddle sore 1000 is uh, make sure you wear earplugs I don't know what kind of bike or it all depends on how loud your bike is and how good your helmet is um, you know my, my bikes a little bit louder it's not that loud it's a touring bike but uh, you know I mean I do have full header on it and everything there and it, it will bark but uh, it's the wind noise you know I, I have a Harley Davidson modular helmet here and uh, you do get a lot of the wind it'll blow up I do have a chin curtain on the bottom that's what comes in the helmet but uh, you do get a lot of wind noise you know, so you know, if you're gonna be out there riding like that for 15 20 hours you know something like earplugs to keep the wind noise you know just to make you you'll appreciate it in the long run for sure I hope my new microphones working well uh, the last time I was out riding and trying to film here still no success so that's why today I'm just gonna try to cover some different topics short and brief and we'll see what comes about you know, I was working with GoPro themselves there, and uh, what it seems like happened is my uh, GoPro mic adapter itself from the rain went bad. And uh, they did send me a new GoPro adapter, which is very nice of them for that. And uh, we're trying that out today. The little tests I did around my apartment seemed to come out really well. So, and uh, I also have a new microphone in here now. Before I had a giant squid microphone. Uh, that microphone right there, I started using that one. John Maxwell, um, now Moto Sarge, some different people, they run that microphone. And uh, so I just looked at what they run for equipment and uh, went, went off of that. It was a good microphone and uh, I have no complaints against it. I just, I, I still have it. But uh, the, the factory rep from GoPro that I was working with, you know, we were troubleshooting back and forth. Is it the microphone? Is it the GoPro adapter? How is it? And uh, we couldn't really tell, but we knew that there was a malfunction there. So I ended up getting uh, a Rode microphone, lapel microphone to put in here. And, uh, it's, you know, they're a little more expensive than what I was hoping to spend on a microphone. But uh, it's like $79 for a microphone. But I sure do enjoy doing these videos. And uh, probably the biggest complaint I have against my own videos is that my audio when you're having trouble with the audio that just messes everything up because just coming out here and riding and looking at things and having things to talk about it seems like that comes fairly easy you know maybe not all of us live interesting enough lives to where we'd have you know 200,000 or a million people follow us but to just come out here and show everybody what you're doing and how what you're seeing that's pretty straightforward but to come back and uh, sit down and un unload everything download everything I'm sorry and uh, find out that your audio is pretty crappy and you can't hear anything or it's scratchy yeah that's pretty that's kind of a downer but uh, I run a Go GoPro Hero 8 Black and uh, 
the other camera that I run, uh, usually I have it up here. It's not up here today just because I'm just running up here to the dealer to get some stuff quick and to do an audio test. I got a GoPro Max that I run 360, but a lot of times I'll just have it shooting back at me. Uh, again, works very well. Uh, no complaints on the cameras or anything such as that. They all work very well. Uh, and then I have a, a drone. You know, I have a Mavic Pro uh, Platinum that I run. I've had that for a while now. And uh, it works very well. So I'm actually going to try to get some footage today with that. Uh, we'll go from there so I haven't seen a, up here in Ohio here I have not seen a new Corvette yet uh, one of the C8s I haven't seen that yet so I keep looking and uh, maybe one of these days I know they're in Florida and uh, Washington DC some of my friends have seen them out there so they're around I just haven't seen one yet So probably the two biggest things about my bike that uh, as far as you know doing the long distance riding or anything like that actually the overall comfort of my motorcycle that really improved it the number one thing I did that drastically changed this bike is definitely putting legend suspension front and back uh, it's not even the same motorcycle as what it was when it was stock the handling that you gain from having legends up front and the ride that you gain from having legends in the rear I you can't even describe it you know they say night and day difference that's true I would even say it's more than that it's like the difference in worlds worlds of difference as far as performance and ride it it's not even the same motorcycle when I picked it up and took it out after they switched out the suspension I was blown away by the, the change. So definitely different suspension. And the second thing that I would say is the biggest change as far as for comfort are these 12 inch Yaffe bars I got on there, these ape hangers. They're not really ape hangers, people say they are, but they're, I know they're not. These ones are only 12 inch. And that put my back and my body position and my arms in such a relaxed position that when I'm riding I literally feel like I'm just sitting in a chair watching the world go by you know there's not a muscle soreness there's not anything it's just absolutely perfect and I can go from there all right go we'll first here there's people out on a bike But yeah these bars made a great big difference and I can credit the service manager up there at the Harley Davidson dealer you know the stock bars when you buy a Road King special are down here and so you're leaning forward and they had just a little bit of a bend back to them and my wrist would hurt so bad after riding for about two or three hours and uh, you know, you'd feel that and you'd get done at the end of the day and you're just constantly working your wrists well, he just had me sit there, close my eyes, and hold my hands exactly where I was most comfortable at. Went through all the catalogs and the books looking for the bars that would come up to the right height, right distance apart, right, right back and forth. And uh, these polyaffy bars were the perfect ones, and we put them on there. And again, I cannot stress enough how big of a difference that made as far as comfort goes. So those would be my two recommendations to anybody when they buy a motorcycle, you know, when they first get it. You know, I, I'm a Harley fan, I like Harley Davidson's, you know, I've ridden some of the other competition motorcycles, hey, they're nice too, I'm just partial to a Harley Davidson. And uh, the main reason I'm partial to Harley Davidson is because of the number of miles that I put on. And I ride by myself a lot. You know, my line of work and what it is there, I'm out here most of the time by myself where I live and where I work. And on the weekend when I want to take off, and if I want to, you know, I don't have a lot of time to coordinate or whatever. And I only live in some place for 
a brief amount of time and then I move on. So I, I don't, you know, I go from construction job to construction job to construction job. So I don't have a lot of time to build up networks of friends and different things such as that. But that leads to me going out and doing a lot of these rides solo. Pretty much every ride I do is solo. And the main reason, again, why I went with Harley Davidson was there's a dealer. Everywhere you go, there's a dealer usually within 50 miles of you. And uh, being a hog member, I'm a hog member mainly just, again, because, like I said, I go out and ride everywhere. But if something happens, you have a way to some somebody come and help you or somebody come and get you, somebody to repair the bike. And uh, peace of mind and things such as that is huge. Huge when you're out riding. You know, nobody else has the... the ooh, that was a big old bump there. I just got done telling you how nice it rides and then I hit a bump like that. But anyway, that was an odd one there. But uh, as far as I know, nobody else has that network of dealerships and everything around there to come out and help you. Which is huge when you're out doing this all by yourself. I cannot get over it. I cannot get over how comfortable this seat is. Like I said, this is now, by the time I get home, maybe 200 miles on it. Man, it just feels perfect. I can feel it like just forming right to my my tail there. And a uh, very nice seat. I, I wouldn't think so, you know. I mean, it's a thinner seat compared to that hammock seat. But again, very impressed. Very impressed with the ride and the quality and everything there. But you know, I can't get over how nice it is. Here we go. Yeah. So, I'm just trying to go over all the different tips, different things I can talk about. You know, we just talked about the new seat. Uh, I went over some of the tips for the Saddle Sore 1000 again for Mudcat there. Um, you know, the different modifications I've made to my bike here. I've done a lot of them. You know, I mean, it. Uh, if you want to know for the long distance touring that I do, you know, mine's got a stage two with a torque cam in it. And uh, I like it, it's fun to ride. And uh, it really makes the bike a totally different bike as far as that goes. And uh, I want to say that my bike right now on the dyno, I know it's 103 horsepower. And I want to say it was 127 foot pounds of torque. I'd have to look on there. I'm not a big numbers guy. I don't really care about that so much, you know, I mean, it. It's the way it sounds, the way it feels, you know, like how it handles. That means more to me than uh, is it 126 or 128 foot-pounds of torque. I don't care about that. But uh, one thing to be aware of when you're trying to do distance riding or if you're going to tour around is when you change that, when you go from a stock bike, my stock, this bike right here stock, I got 42 to 45 miles to the gallon all the time. You know, I, I could run... 240, 230 miles uh, on a tank of gas before I even had to stop and gas up. You know, it was showing my range at 270, 290. Now that I have the stage two in it, I'm lucky if I can go 180 miles. Okay, and my range will come up showing about 200 to 210. And uh, I'm getting right to be around 30 to 34 miles to the gallon. So I lost almost 10 miles to the gallon. And uh, that's pretty big when you're out riding uh, on these tours and on these trips that we take. You know, if you're riding with somebody that can go 200, 220 miles and you can only go 170, you know, it's still, but you know, you're still riding two to three hours, you know, two and a half, three hours. And uh, most people, that's when you kind of want to get off and have a little stretch of your legs anyway. Yeah, so in uh, regards to my mode of vlogging gear, like I said, I have a GoPro Hero 8 and I have a GoPro Max that I run up front up there. Um, you know, the biggest thing I've been working with is the audio. And uh, this is really just a test to see how the audio comes out. So hopefully, if you see this video, that means that at least we've made a step in the right direction. <laughs> uh, that'll be a good feeling. Um, you know, I film in, I go both ways. I do the 4K 30 or 4K 60 frames a second. But to be honest with you, most of the time I run in uh, 2.4K at uh, 24 frames a second. And uh, the reason I do that 
is just because I found when I was running in 1080p that when I uploaded to YouTube the quality was grainy it didn't look that good and uh, when I load it, when I run in 4k whether it's 30 or 60 the file sizes are so big and uh, all I'm doing all my editing on is a uh, an iPad Pro from 2017 and it's only a small one it only has 64 gigabytes there so I don't have a lot of storage you know for different files so what I end up doing is bringing in files deleting them bringing in files deleting them saving them to an external hard drive and uh, like I said I'm not trying to do videos to be a superstar or a big channel or anything like that I'm just sending these back and forth so that my my family can see what I'm doing out here a thousand miles away from where I, I live and grew up and uh, they come out all right uh, you know someday I you know maybe this fall or you know see how all this goes and if I continue doing this and uh, people like it you know I mean, I mean people it really matters to me but you know I really do this for my mom and uh, you know, for my brother back there if they like it and they like keep seeing it I'm gonna keep doing it for sure you know because that's uh, the main reason I'm doing it but uh, you know I'd like to you know obviously get a, a more a bigger computer and uh, then I can do more you know I use LumaFusion software on the iPad Pro there and uh, it, it seems to do everything I wanted to do with it you know I'm learning more and more about it all the time and uh, is that a new one there nope that's not so last year's model I think so I don't know my luck that was the first one I don't think so I think that was a C7 no. but anyway you know I'll get a bigger computer so that then I can uh, process bigger files and maybe a little better quality to come out that way a little groove there get a little better quality you know, I think everybody would like that see there but the audio is the, the main thing I'm working on, for sure. I don't know what else to say, you know, I mean, that's kind of the whole setup that I have. And, uh, you know, I look forward to hearing what other people run, what they use, you know, different tips as to, you know, how to do things better, how to edit things different. Um, probably the, the hardest thing for me finding you know, when you're just a young YouTuber, or, you know, I'm not young, I'm in my 40s, but, you know, when you're just starting out is, you know, without music or anything like that, uh, you know, it's hard to find music, you know, it's not copyrighted or anything like that, and a lot of those different sites that want music, well, they want you to pay, like, you know, 20 or $30 a month from what I saw, and I'm like, I'm just doing this for a hobby, you know, but uh, what I ended up doing was just going to, uh, iTunes and I looked up royalty free music and uh, they had some different albums that were on there and I think it was $12.99 and there was like 60 different songs in there so I purchased that for $12.99 and that's what I use now for uh, all my music and yeah, my music isn't nothing super stellar or anything like that but it, it helps you know in some of the transitions and some of the different things there so that's about all that I have there on that. I can't think of anything else really to cover at the moment. Yeah, so I think this is going to about do it for today's video. Like I said, I'm just out here trying to do an audio test and checking some different things. So I don't want to get too involved or too deep into it just to find out that it did not work. Uh, if it does work, you know, I'll make another one here uh, tomorrow or very soon and get some more stuff. I just want to say again, thank you to Mudcat, and uh, thank you all again to my family for watching, you know, and let me share what I do. I hope you enjoy these. Uh, I know I enjoy making them, so everybody can see a little bit of what I'm doing. And uh, again, thank you very much. Oh, look at this ice cream shop. I always want to stop in here, and I'm going to we'll swing in here. There we go. Slush puppy. Please maintain social distancing. All right. I'll tell you what, I'll eat here and tell you how it is, and I'll get back with you. Yeah, I always wanted to stop at this little ice cream place here, and 
you know they do have some really good ice cream from what I hear and uh, I'll try some and I'll let you know but there's the mighty Road King special We're sitting there waiting for us to get back on it and go Wow look at that bad boy I have to eat it pretty quick though so I'm gonna cut it out here and I'll get back with you after I get done eating this Man, oh man, but was that ever good? Ah, it was just like uh, Dairy Queen, only better. You know, you gotta support these smaller businesses every chance you can. That's what I say. So yeah, very good, very good. Again, I can't get over how comfortable the seat is and you know that was just normal acceleration there and uh, again don't feel like you're gonna slide out of the seat or anything just very very nice feel very good Trump store there we go I should swing in there and see what that is maybe I don't want to put that on YouTube though, so I will not if I go there. I mean, I'll swing back, but I won't put it on YouTube there. I can't put none of that on YouTube now. So somebody will track me down. But anyway. Yeah, I just finished gassing up here. So I think that's pretty much going to about do it for today. I don't really know what more to cover on this test. You know, I went over the new seat here. Again, beautiful seat. Can't say too much good about that. Love the ride, love the looks. Excellent company, excellent service. I went over the Saddle Sore 1000, what I learned from it and what I would do different. And I went over some things here with my bike. So I'll get back and check out this footage. Try to put together a video if it all passes. And I'll be talking to you soon. Everybody have a great day. I'll talk to you later. We're back up in the Canfield here closer and closer to back home beautiful day for a ride just want to see if I can hear the exhaust sound through my helmet here again just testing different things see what's working and what's not 62 miles an hour. See what we got for wind noise, how it all sounds. Got any improvement? I hope we have improvement.